Hello everyone, I'm Joanne and welcome to my craft room. I'm so excited to make this card with you today. I've used an absolute hodgepodge of everything in this craft room it feels like, but really focused on B.B. Cameron's uh, hummingbirds. Aren't they beautiful? Now, um, we're going to look at that set in just a moment. I am an affiliate for Spellbinders, Scrapbook.com, Gina K Designs, and Amazon. If you click on the link below and place an order, I do receive a small commission. Thank you so much for doing that. It does keep me going here. Um, and so I really do appreciate that. Now, let's talk about B.B. Cameron's Hummingbirds here first, okay? Uh, this collection is absolutely gorgeous. We're going to look at what I've used first, and then we'll go ahead and make the card. There's a stencil. This is what I received. Um, there's the Hummingbird and Flowers. There is a stamp set. And then there is this huge 5x7, which is absolutely, totally gorgeous um, uh, set right here. Now, uh, my packaging is different at times. See, a lot of times my packaging is different. This is like the normal packaging um, that you would see in a store. Uh, because I receive samples, sometimes my packaging looks a little bit different. But when you purchase, you get the beautiful packaging. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut some... Uh, hummingbirds out and we're going to go ahead and do some ink blending now I could have used this uh, this is what I was getting at I could have used this absolutely gorgeous background right here but I wanted to show you what you know with other uh, sets you might have in your collection I use the bougainvillea print and I did this because I haven't used it yet I have not used my stamp yet it is a beautiful stamp right here. This is from Pink Fresh Studio, okay? And this is an abs it's a, a red rubber stamp and it's a beautiful beautiful background stamp. And so I just wanted to when I got in here, I first the first thing I did was I knew I wanted to use this stamp. So I went ahead and did my background. Well, then I thought to myself, well, what can I put on top of that background? So then, of course, the um, hummingbirds came to mind. And <clears throat> then, of course, I thought to myself, well, what kind of a, um, a sentiment would I like to use? I looked through a lot of things that I had. And, of course, I decided on my Hexigem uh, sentiments right here. And I hot foiled those onto Gina K cardstock black. Look at how stunning that Hello Friend is. Then I used, today is all about you. This was a Glimmer Hot Foil system right here that Spellbinders had sent to me. Of course, like I said, everything is linked below. And this is exactly what we're going to do today. So there's a lot going on here. Stenciling, um, ink blending, and foiling. Okay? So let's go ahead and um, let me set up for, I don't know what we're going to do first, and uh, I'll be right back and we'll go ahead and start to create this card together. First, what I want to do is go ahead and stamp our background. This is, the, again, that beautiful Bougainvillea um, print right here. And this is from Pink Fresh Studio. Now, I have a piece of Nina White cardstock here, the Solar White. It's five and a quarter by... Um, no, I'm sorry, it's five and a half by four and a quarter. So it's a full card front. We will be cutting it down though. Okay, so I just wanted to use the entire card front so that I'd get a nice position with this. I really don't need my magnet because this is right in this corner, but I think I might could slip it in right there. So I'm just going to use that. So a lot of times you can put your magnet down after you place your large stamp. I do have the foam and everything out of here because this is a rubber mounted stamp. Okay, so you want to do that. I'm going to just close that door, pick that up, and I'm going to use, just because this is what I have, is Memento Black Ink. I'll list you a nice black ink in the description. So I just kind of stamp this all around and close the door. Press, open. Now I see like I know that there's more ink over here because I see spots that are missing. So I'm going to close the door again and just push and let that ink transfer up here also. Okay, just kind of look and get everything transferred first 
down here. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and give it a second coat just to make it nice and bold. I love the Mini Misty. I love it so much I am going to purchase a large one also at some point in time. That came out beautiful, didn't it? Now again, if you see any places that have not transferred some ink, just go ahead and close the door, give it a tap, and it will transfer perfectly because you're in perfect position. Okay, let's go ahead and remove this right here. And I'll put this back here. <clears throat> okay. Now, uh, my card base is, this is, uh, I'm using Gina K cardstock. So let's see, what's the name of the yellow is Wild Daffodil, and then this is Black Onyx. Let me tell you, to foil on this Black Onyx is absolutely stunning, stunning, absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this on here. This piece is 5 and 3 eighths by 4 and 1 eighth. I want a very thin black border because I want to go ahead and pick up the black that we just did. So that's the thinking right there. I've got some Gina K Connect glue in my little glue bottle here. And like I said, I am using, this is like a crafting toss salad today. Because I've used like Gina K, Pink Fresh Studio, Spellbinders, BB Camerons, which is, you know, a Spellbinders thing. Um, what else? I've used... Uh, Pink Fresh, did I say Pink Fresh Studio? I think I did. There we go. Okay, so that's good. Now, on the inside, we need to foil, ooh, that's so much fun, that inside. So now I have this base of the card ready to go. Let's bring this in. I want to do some stenciling. I also want to bring in my, oh, my mat. I want to bring in my, scrapbook.com mat right here and I love this I really have gotten used to using it and I reach for it often this will this is silicone it holds now mine is 14 by 14 that was big enough for me they have all kinds of different different sizes but see now this is not going to move okay now I'm going to take my inks and I'm going to start with the um, I'm going to start with the medium carnation, actually. And I'm going to start with my stencils here. This is the Bougainvillea stencils. So in this uh, set, there are stencils and a stamp, and then there is a hot foil plate. I've used this before, but I have not, I had not used the stamp yet. And so I thought today was a great time to do that. So here the stencils are and they are numbered. Okay. And this is when I first started stenciling. You can go ahead over your stencils and just take a Sharpie if you can't see it. This is like etched. So this is stencil one, two, three, and four. So if you take a Sharpie and um, go ahead and color those in, sometimes that does help. Okay. Now I'm going to lay my stencil and also here, there are like little corners here for your paper when you do cut the five, a five and a half by four and a quarter. Okay, there are corners to line up or, you know, you could just go ahead and, and just look. I like to just look at the stencil myself. Now, <clears throat> I think in that other card I had used the dark um, carnation first and then... Uh, went in with a little even darker carnation, but this time I'm I want to use my light carnation and then go to dark carnation. So watch what I'm going to do here. So now my mat also kind of see how that color changes a little bit. It holds my stencil down. Although honestly, you know, and I know you guys are probably the same way as I stencil. We'll talk. Um, I love these Pink Fresh Studio brushes. This is in the half inch. I have half inch and a quarter. But I know that if you guys are like me, I have to like secure it because 
I don't know, it balances this hand while I'm stenciling. Does that make any sense? <laughs> I love to stencil. I didn't even know until like a year ago that this was even a part of crafting. And of course with the glimmer also, I didn't even know that that was available until about a year ago. And I just really love it. I'll tell you, if you're thinking about foiling for Christmas, now's the time to go ahead and purchase your machine if you don't already have it. Let's say this much. Now's the time to get that machine out and start to just play with it. Look at these beautiful flowers. I love this. I'm doing pretty good with the tapping off. You know, sometimes I forget, as we all do. So here we go. Stenciling is so um, relaxing and then fulfilling. And I remember when I first started doing this, you know, I used to do it in the 80s. I used to stencil everything in the house. And um, <laughs> kitchen cabinets, dressers, everything. Um, but I loved it back then, so why would I not love it now? But I just remember that the at first you look and you're like I've made a mess I've made an absolute disastrous mess but you have not because like when you take the stencil off it's like whoa okay so now this is the first layer and I'm just kind of having fun going over things to get it just the shade that I want. And I want light and I want darker, but we are going to add some dark. So that's layer one. Now watch. Woo! You're going to watch a piece of just blank paper come alive, right? I say that all the time. Okay, now we go to stencil number two. You know, I'll tell you, I really like having that. I have to admit, I remember when I did that and... Um, I don't really think I have, I have to be honest, I don't really think I have followed through with all of my stencils that way, but like using this, I'm like, wow, I really like that. Okay, so here we go. Let me close that up. I can use that brush again on the dark when I'm ready for that. And I wanted to say this right here, nothing moves, okay? I'm using light spruce right here. And let me go ahead and get my green right here. Ooh, you know what? I have right in my spot here that I like to uh, dab off my ink. I'm going to just wipe that off because I know I'll go right into that pink, right? So there's that. Okay, let's go ahead and get that brush. And I'm just going to go ahead and start to stencil this. And again, this is light spruce. And then when we come back in with the other two stencils, it's really going to put all the definition we need into every bit of this. And I just thought that this is such a beautiful background, you know, because like with this background, you could say, thinking of you, get well, um, happy birthday with sympathy. I think this background just does it for everything. And you know, if you don't want to hot foil, of course, you can just, like I'm doing today, just with the stamps. So there's many, many ways. And you know what? I almost feel like this um, stencil would make a good one without any lines, okay? I've seen people put those together like that. <clears throat> so pretty. And I'm just letting it kind of shade itself. And like I said, this is the lighter. Wait till we add the dark. And let's just go back over. Make everybody happy here. just like that. Oh my goodness, I love it. Ta-da! Yay! That's two. Okay, now, 
let's get number three here. And number three now will go over our flowers. Look at that. Isn't that perfect? I'm just kind of see I'm looking here. I want to see my outline, my black outline. See those? You want to get that in there like that. Okay, that's nice. Now I'm going to take my dark secure that down. I'm going to take my dark carnation. And because I'm going light to dark, I can use the same brush. And I'm one, I know that a lot of people don't, but I am one to wash my brushes. Now I'm just going to take this and I'm really going to get heavy with color. Because it just enhances what we have just done in the light. And this is so fast and gratifying. I'll tell you something. I love this mat. You know, uh, nice new little product there. They had them on sale, too, for a while. And, oh, um, you know, while we're talking here, go ahead. As you see, I'm not tapping off with this. Okay, because I want full strength color. And the lines are small, so it's okay. Because it's the accent on the flower. Uh, yes, so while we're talking, you will want to, uh, in the show more, there is my Facebook page. And on my Facebook page is where I post sometimes videos, uh, but most of the time I use that for my ads. Okay, so like uh, today is Monday, I saw that there is, with scrapbook.com, there is a 7% coupon and then a free... I think it's a snow globe or something. It's a free die, free die set, set with an order. So I posted that. So you'll want to, whoo, look at that. Oh, isn't that lovely when you add the darker color? Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's go to stencil four. So you'll want to go ahead and go over to that um, Facebook page and just kind of, you know, in the morning while you're clicking through, maybe you're drinking your coffee or something, um, go ahead and check out my Facebook page. I usually post everything um, pretty early by definitely, usually definitely by 9 o'clock. Um, I have to admit it all depends on what time I get up. <laughs> so Now again, we're not tapping off and I'm into the dark spruce now. I've got, let me make sure, I've got everything well lined up here, yes. Okay. And as you saw, that pink, the dark pink, the dark carnation, come make the light carnation come to life. This that I'm doing right now not only helps the green, but it helps the entire card. This area that I'm doing and it being nice and dark. I love these Pink Fresh Studio blending brushes, I'm telling you. These are wonderful. They really get into the nooks and crannies. I guess I could have gotten a, one of the smaller brushes, but I thought, you know, I'm just using this, so let's just have at it here. Here we go. Oh, you just wait and see this when it comes out. It's going, you're going to be like, wow. It definitely gives the wow factor and gives... Um, dimension to any card when you stencil. And if you are new to crafting, this is a wonderful way to get fantastic gratification, a good project. You know, there's not a whole lot of learning curve with this. It's a line it up and use your ink and let the stencil do the work for you because that's exactly what I'm doing here is I'm letting all these beautiful accents that they have provided for me <laughs> because I am not an artist. I am a crafter. Oh my goodness, this is ready, set, go! Ta-da! Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. Isn't that a gorgeous background? That is absolutely stunning. So, so, so pretty. Now, we can go ahead and add this now to the front of the card. And I'll show you how, because we have that black,
how it just picks up that. <gasps> I forgot to cut it down. Ah! Okay, hold on. I've got to wipe off my glue. I'm going to cut that down. Okay, I thought I'd show you what I did. I took a napkin or paper towel and just blotted the back of this. Now I'm going to turn it over. I want to cut this side right here because there's, I see a little white line there, but this is perfect to the bottom. So I want this five by three and three quarter very simply. So I'm just going to cut it on this side because of the glue. Five. And now let's see which side we want to take that from. We'll take it from this side right here. And three and three quarter. Okay. I bet that's going to look pretty. I brought it in a little bit more on this one yes yes okay so this one I had uh, I cut this piece to five and a quarter by four okay this one I cut to five by three and three quarter I wanted just a little bit more of that black to show because of the beaks and my sentiment that we're gonna do so here we go Sometimes, like I make a card, and then when I make it with you guys, I do a little bit of modification. <laughs> so I'm like, I think that this, oh, I love that. Now look at how stunning that, I think, frames out those flowers that we just made absolutely perfectly. I just love that. So, you know, we're, I mean, this, it's not that this is not good. It's fantastic, but I like the thicker border a little bit better. Okay, so we'll just go with that. Love that. All right, let's move this aside. Okay, I'm going to break just a second here and get ready, and we're going to hot foil. Okay, first we're going to go ahead and uh, do the hot foil for the inside of the card. These are wonderful hot foil plates. This one says, today is all about you. There was like, um, there's a whole collection of them, actually. I have a few here. This one is hip hip hooray, really sweet for a birthday. Um, I hope you uh, have a hoppin' birthday, that's adorable. And then this one is um, best day ever. And these were the ones that uh, they sent me and I have had a great time with all of them. What is wonderful about these is that you could use them inside and out. They also come with a die that you can cut, okay, the entire, um, saying out that's done in that gorgeous color blush of uh, foil today we're going to use gold but um, this is also a fantastic way if you're starting out these are oh my machine is ready we're going to use a hinge technique i'm going to put my little saying up here this piece is hammer mill cardstock four and three quarter by three and a half i like to use the hammer mill for um uh foiling uh Jennifer McGuire got me started on the hammer mill, and so I, it, I've had really good results with it, so it's not like I um, have used anything else, okay? So whatever that you like, from what I understand, as long as you have a smooth cardstock, you should be fine. Okay, so see, I taped that down because I want it in a certain area. I pulled it back. I have to see a little bit of my tape there when we use the hinge technique. Put your foil right up to it and close the hinge. Perfect. Make sure that it's in the right position. And I'm gonna go ahead and flip this down. At a little bit of an angle and push my timer button. I've learned that with a little bit of an angle. Uh, thin shim is kind of the opaque green, which has a heat protectant in it and then the spacer pad so always make sure that you put that green one down first and right on top so we're not going to use this die right here but I wanted to show it to you um, now I've also noticed this is so funny and this is because I'm left-handed okay if I put this here, because I've noticed on other videos, you can really see both, and I have a, my crank handle on this other side. Why I crank with my right, I guess I feed in with my left and then crank with my right is what happens. So, But now, I'm <laughs> now, like from watching other videos, um, 
this is a better way. This way you guys can see better, right? So that's wonderful. Oh, you know what? We could cut out, um, let's see, can we? I like to use, I use a little magic mat, but we can go ahead and cut out our hummingbirds. This is from the BB Hummingbird Collection. I need the birds, the tails, and the wings, all out of um, just some cardstock. This is the uh, Nina White cardstock. So, I'm just going to crank this through, and I'm ready with my hot foil plates. Now, not to have to lift that all the way from the back to the front because I'm in a small area. I'm just going to pop that back and we've got that ready. All right, now I'm gonna undock here. Just threw that in real quick, didn't we? <laughs> and we're gonna go right through here and we're gonna roll slowly. Whenever you're glimmering, this feels very strange to me to roll with my left hand, but we're okay. I'm bringing it back because it's a very solid plate. <clears throat> Not a whole lot of intricate stuff going on there. Let's move this. And I'll bring in my silicone mat. This comes with the system just to pull this off. Whoop. My tape is stuck. There we go. But it also cools on here. Let me go ahead and hold that down so I don't have to touch it. Move my best ever craft tape slowly because it melted a little bit. Got hot, right? <laughs> it's good. <laughs> All right, let's see what we get. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Now see where that's more of a solid plate? That's why I rolled it back. You will learn your machine, okay? Of what you can do, what your machine likes to do, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, so this is the inside of the card. Let's just go ahead and place it. Love it. Let's go ahead because this is done. Go ahead and place it on the inside. Look how pretty those flowers are. Oh, our card is coming together beautifully today. Isn't that nice? Oh, I love it. And you know, you don't always have to hot foil the outside of your card. That is what's the fan most fantastic thing about all of those sayings right there. They, they are great for the inside of your cards. And if you wanted to maybe even do like a Franz frame, like an oval, and then put something over here for someone to write their sentiment, that would be fine too. Or you could put that over here and then a sentiment thing over here. So a lot, a lot, a lot of possibilities, right? Okay, whoops, I forgot to plug that back in. Okay, uh, let's go ahead now, and we're going to use, this is Gina K black cardstock, that onyx black, that is beautiful. Now, what I've learned from other presenters is that when you have sentiments like this, the best way to do it is uh, to go sideways with it, and you get a really, really good... Um, transfer of your foil and I believe that to be totally correct. The other thing with the foil uh, and this is when you cut, let me find my, here it is. Okay, this is the Hexi Gems. Let's go back up a little bit. This is right here, Spellbinders Hot Foil, um, Hexi Gem, Gem Sentiments. All of these sentiments with the dye. Okay, to cut it out. Uh, such a fantastic buy. Look at all that I've done in here. I mean, like I did uh, the black set that uh, on the paper for my card. There's some in rose gold. There's white with gold. I can pick out sentiments and these are fantastic. But what I did learn is that if you want the entire thing to be uh, the foil, cut the foil the size of the dies, not the size of the... Um, the hot foil plate, okay? So, you want to cut the foil, see what I'm saying? The size of the dies, because you want this to foil all the way around so that it will pick up, okay? Um, I should say, wait a minute, 
it will pick it up when you do reverse foiling. We're going to do this, okay? I, I, instead of talking about it, let's just do it. Okay, so I have this. Of course, it's vertical. It's this way. I'm just holding it like this. It's just easier for me. Um, and I'm just going to put a little bit of tape right there. And I'm just going to pull that back. And I'm going to make sure that I have enough foil here for then and you'll see what I'm saying you will definitely see I do I think you know what I think I want to put this here okay I don't want to use a hinge I want to put it in the middle that's exactly what I want to do because I need my foil top and bottom so that when I cut it out with this I have yes that all right you'll see what I'm what I'm talking about with this okay all right now because this is <laughs> um, sideways we'll just put this on like that pretty to pretty press the timer and I do believe I have pretty to pretty right yes okay and our shims good now I have the solid hot foil plate you'll understand in just a moment about all of that. This was a boo-boo place, but I'm still going to use the back side of it. I'm going to bring in the Spellbinders Platinum 6. You bring in your die cut machine. That really did feel weird to crank it on the other side. Okay, I'm going to let this um, heat up and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and ready to do a little um, inking on the hummingbirds that we cut out earlier in the video uh, so I've got these two right here oh my goodness they are so sweet I want to do their little heads um, in a little bit of red I'm going to use the dark carnation these silicone mats the only thing you have to do is wash them with um, soap and water and they get sticky again and they wash up really well and I just think they're fantastic so I'm going to add a little bit of this uh, dark carnation and I'm going to make this bird just a little bit different than my others. All around the little head there. And I'm going to come down its back just a little bit with this red. So pretty. I really liked it in the other one. And <clears throat> I was like, ooh, I want a little bit more of that red. Okay, so now let's go to, um, let's go to the medium spruce. Let's try that. And... Just gonna get my towel here. Make sure I don't have excess ink on my brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, now, as you see, nothing's moving here. See, I can just stencil. Okay. So uh, let's see. I'm just gonna go ahead and let me tap that off. Isn't that wonderful? Now, honest, I I have a little problem up in my head. I have to hold it. I have to hold it. Okay. But you're good. But just in case you get into a tight area, you know you could let go. Okay, so this is light spruce. So pretty. And I'm going to come right here. Hummingbirds, you can make them any color you want. And let your inks touch each other. See, I, I, have, I don't have like a blend right there. I want it to uh, blend the color into itself, okay? because hummingbirds are just so, so, so pretty. Okay, now um, I want to go in. Well, let me go ahead and do my tail feathers. I'll get my little light right here, and we'll get the little tails going right here. And I'm not coming all the way up, of course, on these tail feathers. Okay, there, it's going to almost like fade into, um, it'll be a yellow, actually. And I learned this from B.B. Cameron. Whenever you want to brighten something up, add yellow, which is fantastic. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue with our wings here. Oh, I thought I had it on the wrong side, but I didn't. 
can come up the outside of that edge right there. Now in my other ones I did use a little bit of brown and I don't know if I'm going to do that with this one. I have to look at it first. Okay so that's the light. Now we're going to go into the dark <clears throat> and I'm just going to touch the bottoms. Just like that. Maybe just a little bit on the outside wing area. Just very, very, very lightly. And then I'm just going to come here and give that just a little bit of darkness right at the base. Come up the side just a second there. Just really, really light. Beautiful. Okay, now. Yeah, this looks fantastic. Get these out of the way. Open up a little bit of yellow that I've got here. And I'm going to take another little half inch brush. I don't want to get my brushes mixed up here. Okay. And I'm going to take my yellow, tap off, and add it. Now watch what this does to this bird. Isn't that amazing? I have to bring this up close with and without. It's a completely like altering total transformation of this these die cuts, right? And just go ahead and go over your colors. Let them blend in together. I just love this. Look at the tail feathers. And now the wings and bring it all the way through. Watch that yellow interact with that green. Look at how gorgeous. Tail feathers, green, a little bit more here. Don't be afraid of color because it's just going to look stunning absolutely stunning with this wow okay now we're going to go ahead and put these little guys together okay so the tail feathers get a little bit of glue right in this area okay and they go right on right there so now you see how and why we accented with the dark onto the bird, right? And guys, this is just with some brushes and ink. No big deal on this. Oh, did I miss a, oh, I needed another feather. I've got one, actually. Um, where is my, here it is. I always keep them. I keep a little bag <laughs> of pieces and parts that are not used. So let me see. I know I need another wing. I want is, is like this one right here has you could do it with one wing here, okay? And you can do it with let's see, like a wing here. Hmm. And then this here you can come here, okay, and do this. All right? And uh, I mean that is just gorgeous in itself, okay? But I want two back here. I want to make like a V out of those wings. So I want to make that one a little bit different, okay? So we're gonna do that. <clears throat> so we're gonna make our little V here. Just putting these together. I had these uh, wings done from the previous card. I had an extra, so which is good. I always keep a little baggie full of them. Or we'd have cut it and just, you know, put it together, but since I had it, so here we go. Isn't that cute? With the little V right there. 
so stinking sweet, right? And you can use either side of this, you know, like if you want both the feathers flying back, you can use this other side if you wanted, you know, both of them back. This one, I did them going in both directions just to make it fluffy. We've got a fluffy hummingbird, right? Okay, so here's this one. And again, I'm just going to place that right there. And then right here, just like that. And now I've already made one of the little heads. I just took some of that extra Gina K black cardstock and then cut the little head out of the white. And here are the dies for that right here. This is the beak and this is the little head, okay? And so let's put this one on here. And all of a sudden you're gonna watch these guys come alive because we put their face on. Look how sweet. There are indentations. Like, almost like um, embossed lines. Now this is why too that that little head is red all the way around. Isn't that pretty? Wow. So there's like little embossed lines to show you where to put your um, the little head. Okay. Let me show you that on here. See the little embossed lines right in there. Okay. Now, so I'm going to put the black, I'm putting this one together with us. Okay, and I'm just going to stick that right there. And then he doesn't have character until you put his little face on. Now, of course, you can ink this if you wanted to. I thought the white looked pretty good. I thought we had enough color going on. This fits right over top of that. It is just an absolute perfect fit. Just like that. Wow! Yay! Okay, so then this just rolls up and you put it away. I'm, of course, going to take it and wash it. Okay, so now we have our card. Oh, let's stencil our, um, our envelope. So here's this. Oh, I guess I could bring my mat back. Let's go ahead and do that. BB Cameron has a nice array of stencils uh, in one stencil. So I'm going to just stick that on there, that just like that. And I use the stripes for no apparent reason, just because. So I put this here, and I'm going to hold it, but I'm also going to let my mat kind of hold it down. And I'm going to get my dark carnation, my brush. I'm really not going to take pains tapping it off because these are just lines. Just something different to do. Like I said, there's three uh, in this one stencil. There's three stencils in one. What a fantastic collection. Do you know, oh, I wanted to say this much. She commented, BB Cameron herself commented on my video. I was so, um, I was like so honored and, and she liked what I did on my first video of her uh, collection. Ooh, there's a little bit of green there. Sorry. That's okay. We'll just go over top of it. Um, so I was really like, wow, she commented herself. I hope I did a good job for her, you know. So, um, yeah, that was really, really nice. Because this was the first time that I had... I uh, worked with one of her collections, and that was in my, you know, one of my first videos with it. But and I haven't really had time to come back and revisit these um, these hummingbirds. But this is the perfect time. Summer's here. It's beautiful. We're swimming. You know, it's humid. I feel good. That's so funny. I'm one of those arthritic people that do very well in humidity. And um, look how cute. I'm just going to drop this down here. Right there. So this is my favorite time of the year. I'll go across. Instead of trying to swirl it, I seem to be going under it if I'm swirling. There we go. Good. Can we come over here and get a little bit more? Let's see. Good. 
All right, just a little something on the envelope just to make it fun and happy. Okay, there we go. And now let's go ahead and put our beautiful card back together. Right there. And let's see, um, on my Hello Friend, I've already put some foam on the back of it, and I want to put that in the middle. Now I'll put one hummingbird on top and one hummingbird on the bottom. So today we have ink blended, we have stenciled, we have made lemonade out of lemons. Just like that. Look how pretty. Oh my goodness, I love it. I'm thinking this right here, maybe a tail feather on that black. I kind of like that standing up like that, right? And then a wing up here on the hello. Oh, well, that's perfect. That's just perfect. It couldn't be any better. And just some, I found some gold sequins, so I'm going to use some of that. And just some foam. Any foam that you have will work. Put some here on the wings. And I say, I think the tail feather will stick up on there just fine. And I can really put that right there. Oh my goodness, they're so sweet, right? They are just too sweet. And now, I just had a thought. Okay, um, hang on. Hang in here with me. She, they're like, oh God, she had a thought. There's no telling. Of course, it's an after thing, so who knows, right? Let's put that there. And another small one down here. Okay. And here. Oh my goodness, that's so sweet. All right, where is it? The Wink of Stella. Here we go. Let's do... I have to. I didn't do it on the other one. This is going to look so pretty. I'm shimmering now, Wink of Stella is like a little alcohol, glittery, um, I don't even know what to call it, but it adds glitter and shine to your project. And this is absolutely perfect for that. Now let's see if I could get a little bit right around there. That tip is nice and pointy. <laughs> I did. Now, can you guys, I don't know if you guys can see, look at that shimmer, just with the Wink of Stella. I think it's like an alcohol marker. It dries like really quick. Let me give its belly just a little bit more right there. Back in here. Oh my goodness, yes. See? Oh, I love it. Okay. See, I could have done this before if I'd have thought. Um, before I put it together, you know, but I think we're doing a good job. We're okay. Using Wink of Stella, you don't have to take pains with it, you know. It's just, I just don't want it in certain areas. But I think I'm doing okay with this tip. I had enough. This is a staple for your craft room, is the Wink of Stella. Now look, oh my goodness, that's adorable. Let's go ahead and put our sequins. So I'm going to take a large one. And you can use embellishments, or you don't need to use embellishments, whichever that you'd like to do. I'm just going to put that here, and just two up here. Like one right there. Good. Now, let's take a peek. Oh my goodness, you know what I'm going to do on this card. This card does not have the Wink of Stella 
and this card does and you can just see this is oh I love it I love it I love the thicker border and I love the wink of Stella not that they're both not great okay there they are if you receive this in the mail you would be thrilled right but this really stands out I'm going to add wink of Stella of course off camera to these birds right here and this will go into the shop to be sold. Wonderful. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. And if you have BB hummingbirds, enjoy making these hummingbirds and attaching them to the front of cards. Um, it, almost any card you could stick a hummingbird on, right? I think they're so beautiful. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.